Good morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, our text for this morning is part of the gospel lesson that you heard read um, this Sunday after Easter. Well, I should say I've been doing substitute preaching for almost 20 years now. And this Sunday is a Sunday I always preach because it's when the pastors want to be gone <laughs> after Easter and Holy Week and all the busyness of that time. And I understand that fully. The problem is you preach on the same, it's the same text every year. Um, and for those of you who know who I am, Tom Noel, um, I usually preach on the Thomas portion of the text uh, for obvious reasons. Um, but today I want to talk about those last two verses uh, that you heard, and Sarah referenced those too. But let me just read those again. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. On the basis of these words of Scripture and in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, risen and victorious, my brothers and sisters in faith. So I chose to use those two because, as I say, I've preached so often on the Thomas story. And I thought, when I read this, it says... Jesus did many other miraculous signs. And I thought Pastor Greiner and Pastor Roselle have been talking all through Lent and Holy Week and Easter about road signs, very common road signs. But they've always taken those signs and applied them, pointed with them to Jesus. Road signs are important because they give us information uh, they give us direction, tell us what to do, not to do, and that's kind of what the Bible is about. In fact, it, John says that Jesus did many other signs. He gave us signs too. But do we pay attention to the signs? I think very often we ignore signs, and we all do it. Sometimes people ignore stop signs. Many times people ignore speed limit signs. Uh, one that strikes me when I think about ignoring signs, if you've ever been down um, by Woodfield and you get back up on 53 going north, as you get, uh, go up the ramps, there are these huge, massive signs Nobody could miss them. They say, do not cross double white line. I don't think I've ever driven up that ramp when a car in front of me or behind me has not crossed the double white line to get over into the express lanes. So they simply ignore the sign. My question today is, do we ignore the signs that God gives us. The sign he gives us is summarized in John's gospel, and it's all in this book. It's throughout this book. Do we ignore it? Mommy, mommy, said the little girl, pointing to the large family Bible sitting on a table in the living room. Mommy, whose book is that? Oh, the mother said very piously. Oh, honey, that's God's book. The little girl thought for a minute, and then she said, Well, Mom, I think we ought to give it back to him because we're not using it. God gave us his book, his word, for us to use, for us to read, 
for us to pay attention to. We might call this the instruction manual for faith. Or someone made the word Bible into an acronym. Basic instructions before leaving earth. I kind of like to substitute at the end, basic instructions before living each day. But, as Sarah asked at the beginning of the service, do you read instructions? I think we've all been guilty of it. We get something, Ikea, toys for Christmas or birthday that need you know, they usually, the directions say, need some assembly. Oh, I can handle this. I can handle this. I can do it. And we start putting it together and something doesn't work. And finally, in exasperation, we think, maybe I ought to read the directions. Maybe I ought to check it out and see what it says. Uh, it's not much different in life. I, I, we all do it. We try to go it on our own. You know, we're very independent. I can do it myself. And we try to go it alone. I, I confess I've done it myself with, even with preparing sermons. I, I'm trying to write something. I want something to come and I'm struggling, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at that, and all of a sudden I realize I haven't even prayed about this. You know, what's wrong with you? But I think we all do things like that. I, I have a feeling that if we were flying in a plane and we found out from the pilot that the plane was going to crash and that there were parachutes that we were supposed to put on, I think we'd listen to the directions. I think we'd follow everything that the pilot said. I don't think we'd wait until we were in free fall and then go, okay, what do I do now? And yet, isn't that how we are with God? We try things on our own. And then when they don't work, God, where are you? Why are you letting this happen? And we've been ignoring him. We haven't been paying attention. And so John, as well as the other writers, puts it down for us. John says, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. So he's writing down these signs for us. And notice, he, he did many other things. Listen to the last verse of John's Gospel. It's in the next chapter. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Wow. So they've written down by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, what God wants us to know, what he wants us to pay attention to. And then John tells us, and we've done this for you for two reasons. One, that you may believe. St. Paul in Romans chapter 10 says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So these are written that you may believe. And secondly, that you may have life. Life now by faith and life forever. As Jesus said to Martha in John chapter 11, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. 
until a few years ago, I carried with me constantly a pocket calendar. In fact, I had two, one that stayed at home and one I had in my pocket in case I lost that one, I had the one at home. Because I would say kind of tongue in cheek, next to my Bible, the most important book I own is my pocket calendar. That had my life on it. Now I don't even have one anymore. Now I have, you know, a cell phone. And what a boon that was, because there's everything I need to know is on that cell phone, all my calendar, and it goes immediately to my computer at home. And I mean, it's, it's wonderful, except if I don't look at it. If I don't check it in the morning, I don't know what's going on that day. And how foolish to have a calendar, to have something that tells you what's going on and what to do, and then not pay attention to it. Aha. Here it is. God's Word. Our calendar for every day. We need to look at this. We need to be in God's Word every day. Let me ask you something. I'd like you to raise your hand. I know people are very shy about doing this because I've used this illustration many times in my 20 years of sub-preaching, and I always have to kind of talk people into raising their hand. But how many of you had breakfast this morning? Oh, good. You know, that's the most important meal of the day. Oh, that's a different topic. How many of you will go home and eat today at lunch or at supper time? How many of you are going to eat today? We've got a couple people who are fasting. That's good. You know, might be important too. All right, now this is a very serious question. Think about it and then answer. Raise your hand. How many of you are going to wait until next Sunday before you eat again? None of you? It's a silly question, isn't it? Here's the key. How many of you are going to wait until next Sunday? Until you nourish your soul. We wouldn't think of going a day without eating. And it would be foolish. Because if we quit eating... We would get weak and we would die. And yet, how often we starve ourselves spiritually by not being in God's Word. These are written that you may believe and that you may have life. When I was teaching confirmation class and we'd get to the part about the Lord's Supper, we would always deal with this issue about how often should we go to communion? What's the frequency? You know, Jesus said, do this often in remembrance of me. Well, what's often? When I talked about that, I like to quote Martin Luther, and I'm going to get the quote for you. Um, Martin Luther said, if a person does not seek holy communion at least four times a year, it is to be feared that he despises the sacrament and is not a Christian. In fact, Luther goes on, he should pinch himself to see if he is alive. You see, what he's saying is, Luther was saying, I I can't understand how anyone who knows what this sacrament is, what Christ has done for each one of us, and how he brings us the blessings of what he has done in this sacrament, how could anyone who knows that stay away? And so my question takes Luther a bit out of context, but ask the same thing about this. How can anyone 
who knows what this contains, that God here has given us his plan for our salvation, his guidance and direction for our lives, his promises, his assurance, his comfort, his peace, his strength. I could go on. It's all here. How can we not use it regularly? I'd like to think we could nourish ourselves spiritually as often as we nourish ourselves physically. So look at God's word. A grandmother, before she died, hid a great deal of wealth and stocks and bonds in her Bible and left it to her grandson. He was a little disappointed that that's all he got from Grandma was a Bible. Even though Grandma had said to him, I'm going to give you something that is a great treasure. He got a Bible. Her Bible went on the shelf. He fell on hard times. Things were going very badly for him. And one day, for some reason, remembering Grandma, he picked up the Bible and found a treasure. Fortunately, not only did he find the physical treasure, he found a spiritual treasure. He found what Grandma wanted him to find. He found Jesus. He's here. Read the directions. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a couple of questions for you to ponder. Think about, maybe talk about with your family. Um, so, do you usually read instructions? You talked about that a little bit. But the other one, how can you plan to improve the amount of time you spend in God's Word? If you read the Bible once a week now, how about twice a week? If you read it every day, how about doubling the amount of time? Every one of us can do better than than we have been. Think about this. Talk about it a little bit. God bless.